first thing is to realize that it's self-created, right? We talked about this before. You, what you think, how does that happen? How does, where, do, where does the mind turn into the body when it comes to stress? So if you're sitting at your desk and you're stressed about a project that you're getting, gonna, gonna have to do, how does that actually turn from something that's happening in your brain to something that's happening in your body? It happens through your spinal cord. Your spinal cord then connects to what organs of stress? Do you guys know? It's actually little organs above your kidneys called the adrenal glands. They re release uh, a chemical called cortisol. So we'll get into that in a second. I don't want to jump ahead too much. So what are the categories of stressors? There's stressors that are outside of your body or inside your body, but like we said, the way that I think it's most clear is to talk about physical, chemical, or emotional stress. So it's either something in your physical environment or through your social interactions or something on the inside. You create all those stresses yourself as well. So how can we change those stressors? If we talk about um, physical, chemical, and emotional stress, how can we, if we're talking about chemical stress, which we said was your diet and the toxins in your lifestyle, what can you do to decrease your levels of chemical stress? Change your diet. Change your diet, right? It's pretty simple. You can eat nine fruits or vegetables a day, but don't let that create emotional stress, all right? So you can change your lifestyle, and that would be, that would be one example. What about if you know that you drink too much? Could moderate that. You would be taking a toxin out of your life, decreasing your level of chemical stress. What about physical stress to your body? What are some of the ways that you could exercise. could right exercise would be a great way, right? What about what about what are some other ways that physically you could Im improve the stress levels to your body? Exercise is a really good one. How what about doing something like yoga? Does that that's physical? and emotional, right? Because there's a relaxation component built back in there. What we do, what I do in my office is also a physical way to improve the function of your body and decrease the stress that's going through your body. Chiropractic getting adjusted. What are some other ways to affect um, emotional stress? What do you think about that? How can you emotionally become healthier as a, in, in your everyday life? What are some things that you can do in your lifestyle or change about your lifestyle that would decrease your levels of emotional stress? Try to relax more. Try to relax more. What would be some good ways to do that? Take a break when you need it, right? You'd actually be more productive taking some breaks than just trying to work straight through. Has anyone here ever worked to the point of exhaustion? And then you realize that you spent the last half hour blankly staring at the computer screen trying to figure something out? Absolutely. You, you've basically gone past the point of what your body can do, and you're in a point where you're actually, you'd be better off taking a break. It would be more productive. What about, what are some other ways? Well, if we talked about yoga again, that's another, that's a way to relax, right? What about spending time with your family on the weekends, or making sure that there's a balance in your life emotionally? Those are all ways that you can emotionally be healthier, right? What about a vacation? Do you think that a vacation can actually make you more productive in the long run? Of course it will. So change your lifestyle, change your thinking, and change your behavior. So let's talk physiologically about how the brain turns chemically into stress in your body, right? So initially, when you're scared, if you hear footsteps behind you in the dark, what happens? It starts in your brain. The brain communicates to the body through your spinal cord, specifically to the adrenal glands, which are these little glands on top of your kidneys here. But so what, what, what happens then is those chemicals travel throughout your body. Why does your body respond to stress that way? Your body's a really smart thing, right? I mean, it knows what it's doing, but why, so why would it do this? Why do we want have to stay alive? It because it wants you to stay alive. That's absolutely right. It's because it was designed when it was a tiger coming up from behind you at night, right? So all of a sudden you wanted to be able to run fast, jump, get away. So it's really a physiological response where your 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 brain doesn't think as much, but your body gets, is turned on so that you could run away or fight, right? It's fight or flight is what that's called, and that's really what stress is. 
But today you get that fight or flight mechanism and you're sitting at your desk at work or you're thinking about something else. So what happens when you get stressed? When you walk, if, if you were to look at someone at their computer, how would you know if they're stressed? They might look like this, right? And it's because their nervous system is turned on. Their, their sympathetic nervous system is turned on. So you get a burst of energy, right, when you're stressed. But um, impaired cognition. So you've got more energy, but it's really just the animal part of your brain. It's not the, you can't think very clearly when you're in that state, right? You can just know, your body just knows how to get away. You've got, um, you know, your, uh, your blood sugar will spike, um, and your body will basically go into a point of, of, it wants to be able to do something really physical for the next half an hour. And that's basically what that does. The problem is, is that you've got shallow breathing, your liver is working. What happens if you're stressed over a long period of time, though? Your body's only designed to have that physiological response for, you know, about a half an hour. And it's designed that you're actually going to physically do something when you have that response. So what happens if you're chronically in that? If you're all the time in a stress state, but you're never getting rid of those stress hormones? Your body is chronically living in a stress state, and that's, this is a huge part of a lot of our lifestyle diseases today, is that your body is stuck in a stressed out state. And you guys have seen people like this, what do they look like? They've, they're stressed over time, they're walking around like a zombie, right? And uh, your digestive system doesn't work, um, you know, your, your body is basically not working the way that it's supposed to. Um, hair loss or baldness. Nobody wants that, right? Um, <laughs> does anybody think stress is really... Does anybody think cardiovascular disease is related to stress? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, of course it is, right? Um, lungs, it's going to exacerbate your condition there. We could go throughout the body and see how stress affects your, your spine, your body, your, the function of your organs. Um, if we look at your muscles in your neck and back specifically, what happens with stress over time there? Things get tight, your shoulders come up, those, that can actually pull your vertebrae out of alignment. It has, stress has a lot to do with skin problems. So your body's not meant to be in that hyperactive stress state for a very long period of time. A lot of, a lot of the problem is, is that it's stuck there. So what about your stomach? Does anyone, have you guys ever uh, been stressed and, and got an upset stomach? I know, I, I, this, I used to do this all the time. Uh, and I still have to watch out for this. If I get stressed, one of the first places I notice that is in my stomach because your body's not meant to, to function that way. We've got constipation, ulcers, acid reflux. We don't need to go through any more of that. All right. What about your immune system? Do you think that an impaired immune system will happen if your body is in a stress state over a long period of time? Absolutely. Um, we end up with, with more likely to get sick. If you work really hard or you push yourself past the point of what's normal for you, are you more or less likely to get sick? You guys have all had this happen probably, right? You worked really hard on a project or something. As soon as you got done with the project, you got sick. You really, your body was telling you, hey, you need to slow down. You actually worked yourself into a weakened immune system. Okay. Okay. So what about stress and diseases of civilization? We kind of already talked about that, right? So what about the mind-body?